exact same but this time this time Jesus is far greater than a prophet he's far greater than anything God you call me by my name the love you give me I just can't deny hello everyone Hello everyone, it's your girl Maya Deja and welcome back to Cultivate Women with Christ. So in today's episode, basically, if you did not watch the previous episode, then I suggest you to go watch it. But I mentioned to y'all that I will be including expository, exegetical teaching um into my podcast like a pattern so last week I did a topical message that was about basically rest and so this week I'm doing expository exegetical message I'm just paraphrasing here and you can look up what expository and exegetical mean for yourself I put a link in the previous video I put a, a video link that explains expository but I'm just paraphrasing so exegetical is a more so basically like a deep Bible study. You, you, you're looking at the context, the commentary, who wrote it, the, the theme, the dates, um, who is it to, where, where was it written? You're looking at all of these facts, basically, within your Bible study. So exegetical, if you are you know, a follower of Christ, if you read your Bible and you like going into depth with your own personal devotional time with the Lord, then that's basically what exegetical is. It's basically you like, for example, the SOAP method. The SOAP method could be a format of exegetical, but the SOAP method only talk about the SOAP method format is only scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So exegetical is more so, like I said, the author, all the historical facts, like the background. So you can get the full context of like, what is this saying? Basically, expository is taking that exegetical study. In other words, deep Bible study, taking that and um, articulating it in a way that people will understand. So that is like my simple definition of those two words but you can definitely look up the definition for yourself we're going to be coming out of hebrews chapter one but let's go ahead and get into prayer so father god had holy spirit i ask that you come into this place lord god i invite you right into this place lord god everyone who's listening or watching i pray that this episode will bless them lord i pray that you will give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding about what exegetical and expository is and what Hebrews 1 is saying. What is the context of this passage, Lord? Lord, I nail my flesh to the cross and I just ask that the Holy Spirit just speaks to me. Lord, help us not to look at the Bible in a selfish, self-centered way, but actually look at it through who you are and what you are trying to say in this period of time and this message and this context of scripture. God, may you help us to be those kind of Christians and to be those kind of churches who practice our faith in a way that is vibrant, committed, and unafraid and bold. In Jesus' name, amen. The reason why I prayed in that way, um, the last part of my prayer, you're going to see as you go through this episode, you're going to see why. And it's because of what I'm about to talk about. The first step is to basically let's read Hebrews chapter one. So just think of this as like a Bible study, like a deep Bible study. But I actually, I'm actually telling y'all like what it means and what's happening and what's going on and why is this relevant for today and why do we need to um, take it into uh, consideration? Um, who is Jesus? Who is God? Um, through this text like it's really just a deep deep bible study and it's just a bible study that's just not about self it's not about how you feel or anything this is god's word and every word every word is inspired by him and it's sharper than a two-edged sword okay 
So like I mentioned in the previous video, topical messages are more so us taking a topic and we're taking a couple of verses and we're just, okay, we're talking about this. Okay. And let's go find some verses that corresponds with this. But when you do exegetical and expository, you're kind of just saying, Lord, where do you want me to read? What do you want me to read? What do you want me to teach and preach on? Kind of more humbling because topical, like I said, I don't have nothing against it. I still do it, right? I still use that for that method, but let's not neglect the deep Bible study. Let's not neglect scripture, like the actual context of scripture. Let's not neglect that, okay? And I just believe that um, topical you have a more you have more room to talk about yourself it's like if i make a topic if i do a discussion about lust i'm going to use my testimony my experiences i probably sprinkle in a couple scripture that's what you see nowadays like that's what topical is kind of portraying and like i said it's nothing wrong with it when you're when i the study that i'm about to do right now this exegetical study about hebrews chapter one I don't have no room to talk about myself, to tell my testimony in this, because it's it's just about God's word. That's what I'm aiming for this week. It's just about God's word, because I want my podcast to be less of me and just more of him. And I'm going to continue to do topical messages, but I'm just saying that I'm also are going to do these type of uh, episodes too, these type of messages too. And if you still don't understand where I'm coming from, you can always email me. I have my email in the description below where you can comment a question and I'll be sure to answer it uh, on the next episode, like during my intro. I hope by now that y'all turn to Hebrews chapter one. So grab your Bibles, your printed Bibles or your phone. I don't know if you're watching this on your phone, but yeah, grab your Bible. So I'm coming out of the ESV version. Okay, long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir. I think it's heir or heir of all things, excuse me, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the names he has in inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to who, which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, Today I have begotten you, or again, I will be him, be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and never. The scepter of uprighteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. The heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment, like a robe. You will roll them up like a garment. They will be changed, but you are the same. And your years will have no end. And to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? God, this is your word. And I just pray that you give me wisdom, insight and understanding. OK, so I just want y'all to um, I just read through this whole scripture. Right. But I'm about to go through verse by verse and break it down. And we're about to just yeah, we're about to dive right in. But before I break it down, I'm going to give you all the context of the book of Hebrew. So the author of Hebrew is unknown. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Um, there's some speculation that the second generation Christians due to him receiving the message of Christ, possibly someone who was 
I guess maybe like after Jesus came, after Jesus died, like someone maybe in do those times that written it. The date, it was written before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Book is rooted, the Hebrews book is rooted in the Old Testament. This is the type of video where you want to take notes and you want to go back to scripture. Location, most likely is during the persecution under Neo, N-E-O, AD 64 through 68. Who is it to? The Jewish members of the church. The purpose is encourage Jewish Christians to persevere through their faith. Who were in Rome who were tempted to shrink back from their Christian confession because of increasing persecution. Is to encourage those Jewish Christians who were experiencing persecution who needed to be strengthened in their faith. Okay, they was tempted to shrink back from their Christian faith because of that persecution. And basically, whoever wrote this book of Hebrews is basically encouraging those Jewish Christians to, hey, hold on to this hope, hold on to Jesus. The theme is the revelation of God in Christ, God's son. Hebrews has 29 quotes and 53 allusions to the Old Testament. Hebrews is basically a book that exhorts discouraged Christians to continue on a strong strong with jesus in the light of complete superiority of who he is and what he did for us hebrews is like an essay letter type of format the way that hebrews one ended is like <laughs> it's like it really could have continued like you know how you read a part of scripture where it's like oh okay dang like is there some verses missing but it's like hebrews is like a book that just kind of wrote like it just kind of rolls over into the next chapter type of thing book of hebrews is god the father telling us what god the son is all about okay so this is something you're gonna want to write down if man cannot learn about god from the son no amount of prophetic voices would convince them John 12 50 Jesus continually acknowledges that he is from God the Father that his words is from God the Father and Jesus is God the Son okay so let's read verses 1 through 2 reread that over long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets so let's start with verse 1 God spoke to our fathers by the prophets in many ways and in many times so the prophets spoke to the father our fathers which the term our fathers is basically talking about like other generations families um a father a male role was always like the leader of the household i'm gonna go at many times in many ways god spoke to our fathers by the prophets so he's saying that God spoke to the prophets in many ways, in many times to then speak to our ancestors like long ago, long ago, right? To the people long ago, um, men in many ways, in many times. Let's continue in verse two. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, which is Jesus Christ, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. The scripture shows that Jesus is the creator of the world. I tell y'all this as well. This whole study that I'm doing, um, I will have the notes linked in the description. Again, I will have the notes linked in the description. So in case you want to like look at my notes after this video and go, you know, your own personal time with the Lord or whatever I have, to, I'm going to make sure that as I do these studies, I'm going to always have the notes for y'all because some people are different. Some people are visual learners. Some people are audible learners. Some people just like to read like so I understand and I got you. So continuing, Jesus brought a revelation superior to the old testament psalms 19 1 through 4 romans 1 through 20 romans 1 20 says for his invisible attributes namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made so they are without excuse so in this verse is talking about jesus as the creator so the writer knew that god exists and god speaks to men you see in these texts from verses one through two that god does indeed speak to his people like he's tried he tried many times and through many ways through the prophets to speak 
to his people and now he's using his son Jesus Christ to do the exact same but this time this time Jesus is far greater than a prophet he's far greater than anything like he did it all his work was finished he completed the work that God sought him out to do this time this is God's son this is God's only begotten son that he sent to us to speak to us so now we can go straight to the father straight to God through Jesus Christ through his son and just to make this clear Jesus is God too we have the father the son and the holy spirit revelation given to the prophets were in parables historical narrative poetry you know we see the psalms proverbs ecclesiastes those different types of formats those were different ways different times that god spoke <laughs> that god spoke that's uh, some of the examples verse two it says when i just told y'all it says he has spoken to us by his son so the the writer is this is the first time the writer acknowledges the readers it says he has spoken to us us which he's talking about the jewish christians during that time so this is the first time he mentions the right he, this is the first time he mentions the readers now another example that god speaks in many ways he spoke to moses through a burning bush he spoke to elijah by a still small voice so he speaks okay god is a god that is not just going to leave us out there for 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 the wolves like he's he's gonna speak and he time and time and time and time again god was trying to bridge the gap between man and him and he did that through his son jesus christ jesus is our advocate it shows that jesus christ was more than a prophet he's the savior and lord jesus is the message from the father he revealed what no other prophet could he is the personality of god the prophet spoke to the fathers in various ways and God spoke to the prophets in various ways. Deity, this is a quote by Spurgeon. Deity is not to be explained, but to be adored. And the sonship of Christ is to be accepted as a truth of revelation, to be apprehended by faith, though it cannot be comprehended by understanding. In this quote, he's basically saying that faith is the way to jesus to um got a relationship with god we will not understand everything we will not understand most things so now we're going to go to verse 2b and 3 which i kind of already you know but let's just read it so it says whom he appointed the heir of all things through whom also he created the world he is the radiance of the glory of god in the exact imprint of his nature and he upholds the universe by the word of his power after making purifications for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high he is the radiance of glory of god so jesus hold the birthright and is the heir of all the fa of all the father has so i wrote this down somewhere but heir basically means a person who receives something of value from a father so all things created through him through jesus god has given christ all of creation as a gift because all was created for him collegians and i could be saying this wrong 116 and john 335 those are some reference scriptures the inheritance that christ receives includes believers those whom the father has given to the son inheritance that christ receives so his gift his uh his portion is the believers it includes the believers it includes us we are the co-heirs of jesus christ believers are co-heirs with christ romans 8 17 meaning believers have been given the privilege of sharing christ's inheritance now as we do share in some things with christ I want y'all to know that we also share in his suffering and this is why the writer is trying to encourage these jewish christians during this time hey jesus he's the way he's greater than everything he's greater than the persecution that you're facing right now like adopted sons of god christians 
are treated as firstborn heirs. Hebrews 12, 23, our inheritance includes salvation, eternal life, and even a measure of the throne of Christ. Revelation 3, 21. We have some inheritance, y'all. We have inheritance. God didn't just not give us anything. It kind of, side note, it kind of reminds me of, um, I'm reading numbers right now and God is about to, the Israelites are about to enter the promised land and God is going to divide it up among the people. And he's so fair with giving people their portion and their inheritance. And Jesus is because of Jesus that we get to share that inheritance of salvation, eternal life and a measure of the throne of Christ. Revelation 321. I'm actually going to go to Revelation 321 to actually read that. One who conquers, I would grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Wow. Isn't that amazing? About the radiance of Jesus, the radiance of the glory of God. So Jesus is a literal image of God's glory. Like he, he glorified God he glorifies God in so many ways. He literally offered his body as a living sacrifice. Brightness equals apagasma, which is a Greek word, which equals radiance that shines from a source of light. Jesus represents God to us. So in this sense, Jesus is the beam of, beam of glory. We have never seen the sun. We only see the rays of the sun, like its light as they come to us. Even so, we have never seen God but the father but we see him through the rays of the son of god in his earthly ministry jesus constantly demonstrated the power of his word so jesus in his earthly ministry he was able to cast out demons in his name he was able to heal the sick in his name he was able to forgive sins in his name that's why when we pray we say in jesus name because jesus name holds authority and in hebrews 1 the simplified message of hebrews 1 is that jesus is greater than every single name on this earth every name and we're about to get down to even the things that people think that he's not created in see there's been a lot of speculation that Hmm, Jesus was just a prophet. Hmm, Jesus was just this and Jesus was, no, Jesus was God. He was God in the flesh. Okay, and he's also our savior. He's also our Lord. He's also our king. He's the Lord of Lords. Like he's above every single name. He's above every single circumstance, every single situation, every persecution there is to come for our Christian faith. He is above it all. And that is King Jesus. I don't know. I'm getting fired up because it's like, yes, <laughs> his word is powerful. This word, this Bible, it's powerful. OK, we have freedom in Christ. So him being seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, it exemplifies righteousness. He literally, God the father, invited his son to sit at his right hand. What a relationship. What a relationship to be at that close of proximity with God the Father. That's why Jesus came so we could be at proximity with God the Father too. Now, we might not sit at the right hand of his throne, but through Jesus, being that Jesus is so close to God, probably just like this, right? He's so close to God. And those of you who may be listening, um, I got my fingers close together. So he's he's super close to God. So he's able to he's able to say God. He's able to say father like you know Deja she needs she needs this and you know help her with peace and you know he's so close to God that he's able to just have a conversation with him and answer our prayers like answer our prayers and give us authority while we were in here on earth because it says Matthew 6 10 says your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven understand that Jesus is the atonement for our sins it's through him that we go through purification we don't have to offer up no lambs no goats no sacrifices because he is the ultimate sacrifice so now we're about to go into verses four through five which talks about 
Jesus is much better than the angels. The scriptures prove Jesus is superior to the angels. Jesus is superior to the angels because he is the son of God, which is shown in Psalms 2, 7 and 2 Samuel 7, 14. Having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son today? I have begotten you or again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. So this is showing this like father son relationship between God, the father and God, the son. <laughs> we see how God like really adores his son. Like he really adores his son. We see this relationship. We see the special name given to Jesus, the special name of the name of son. That name was not given to angels. That authority was not given to angels. The proximity that Jesus had to has to God the Father wasn't given to angels. So we see that the author is trying to get the Jewish Christians to understand that, hey, Jesus name is above those angels. And this is why this is why there was a dangerous tendency to worship angels developing in the early church. Colossians 2.18 and Galatians 1.8. Colossians 2.18, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism, asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind. So Paul, in this text, people were worshiping angels. They was confiding to the... Uh, it was confiding in something that was inferior to them because Jesus is superior over us. And this is what I concluded. You will never worship something that is inferior to you. You should never worship something that is inferior to you because it holds no power. You should only worship something that is superior to you, which is Jesus Christ, because his name holds the true power. Okay, when you worship something, it's because it's higher than you. Jesus is higher than us. He's higher than the angels. The angels are to worship him, not we worship the angels. Okay, in Galatians 1.8, Paul had said, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. And the word of curse means to be under a curse. That's why the writer was pointing out, hey, like Jesus is above angels. He's above it. So don't even try to, you know, worship angels and, you know, because that's what was happening. Also, the heterical idea that Jesus himself was an angel, which is false, because that concept degrades his honor. It degrades God's glory. It degrades the majesty. It degrades the very thing that he did, which, which was die on a cross for our sins. An angel can't do that. An angel is limited in its ability. An angel is literally just here to minister and to serve God. They, that's it. Praise God and worship God. They're not meant to have any sort of like dominion. Dominion was given to us. And Satan took the keys of our dominion, right? Um, I'm not going to go into depth on that, but what happened in the garden, Satan took the keys of our dominion and he's still trying to take those keys. He's still trying to not have, not let us have dominion of earth because when we have dominion of earth, we have authority in Jesus Christ over this earth and we can literally be free in Christ and the enemy obviously doesn't want that. So the angels, they don't have any sort of governing or dominion. They are just here to be a ministering spirit. And I'm, I'm going to get into that in a second. Saying that Jesus is better than the angels helps us to understand that he's better than anyone or anything in our life. And it's so sad that people will worship angel numbers and things like that. And because that is not God, that is why worship something that is like something God created? Like why worship his creation when you can worship him as the creator? So God said things to his son that he never said to the angels. He is the son of God. He is perfect. Psalms 2, 7, um, it talks about, I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, you are my son today. I have begotten you. So this was like, a prophetic fulfillment right there psalms 2 7 so let's go ahead to verse 6 through 7 and again when he 
brings the firstborn into the world. And this is, by the way, I'm, I'm in Hebrews 1, just to reclarify, Hebrews 1, 6 through 7. He again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says that all God's angels worship him. Of the angel, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. So we see in this verse 6, we see that, first of all, when Jesus was born, people were, like, when he was put into this world, there were some people that worshipped him, like, as a baby. That's why Herod was so mad. He started wanting to kill the newborns and stuff. And so, it's basically, the writer is saying in this text, like, Look, why would Jesus be an angel? Why would you worship angels? They are inferior to him. They are meant to actually worship him. That's what they're meant to do. And it also says that the angels are ministers of flame of fire. Angels belong to Jesus. And the angels and the angels worship and serve Jesus who is their God. Deuteronomy 32 verse 43. Rejoice with him, O heavens, bow down to him, all gods, for he avenges the blood of his children and takes vengeance on his adversaries. He repays those who hate him and cleanses his people land. Verse 6 through 7 didn't have like too much to say. So let's go ahead to verse 8 through 12 of Hebrews chapter 1. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprighteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They all will wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. So, Skepter is a rod is used by a sovereign as a symbol of royal authority so when it's saying that the scepter of uprighteousness is the scepter of your kingdom is symbolizing jesus royal authority jesus is superior to the angels because the father himself calls him and not any angel god and lord yahweh as shown in psalms 45 6 through 7 and psalms 102 25 through 27 Psalms 45 6 through 7 your throne O God is forever and ever the scepter of kingdom is the scepter of righteousness you have love righteousness and hate it so basically the writer of Hebrew like <laughs> this is like Hebrews I mean Hebrews 1 and Psalms 45 6 through 7 has the same thing because the writer of Hebrews um they use a lot of quotes like they use a lot of like I explained to y'all like they use a lot from like was already in the Bible, basically, it was already written. Deity, I don't know if I told y'all, but a deity, I think I'm saying that right, concept of being a divine, being divine or being a God. So Jesus is called Yahweh, and he's God. He's self-existent, never changing, always the same. So when it's talking about your throne of God, you have love righteousness, like this uh, display of like different words and um is the use of second person this is shows an interaction between the persons of the trinity so god your god speaks of the father in his position authority over the second person of the trinity you refers to the son so i don't know if that quite makes sense so god your god speaks god your god speaks of the father and his position of authority right and then over the second person so his position of authority over the second person of the trinity which they're, they that's why they kept saying you like you have love righteousness uh he has anointed you beyond your companions you you lord lay the foundation of the earth so it's talking about uh jesus as the second person in the trinity when it uses you um in the verses of 8 through 12 of Hebrews chapter one, because I already stated that Hebrew, um, sorry, Jesus is the creator from the beginning. So it's talking about him in part of the Trinity. God, the father is saying about his son. So you refers to the son anointed has in mind the ministry in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So anytime you, you see, um, it says, therefore your God, your God has anointed you. So it's talking about the Holy Spirit in this sense with the oil of gladness 
anytime you see anointing anointed or oil is the representation of the holy spirit in the bible so it shows that the son is not only called god but also called lord yahweh that's why it says you lord laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning in verse 10 and the son is described with attributes in terms that belong only to god so it's the, the author is proven like look these are attributes and terms that god is talking about in son so he has to be superior than any angel than any name than any prophet he's higher than moses he's higher than elijah he's higher than john the baptist like he's higher like he's higher than above and everything and it says you love righteousness you hated wickedness because jesus during his ministry he called out the things that were were that were not right they will perish but you remain and it's saying that how like jesus is forever he's eternal you are the same and your years will have no end so it reminds me of the verse that's um that says like you are the same forever and ever today yesterday and forever like god is the same forever and ever let's go ahead to verse 13 through 14 <laughs> of hebrews chapter one and to which of the angels has he ever said sit at my right hand until i make your enemies enemies a footstool for your feet are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation so the angels are sent out to serve for those who are to inherit salvation which is pertaining to us the jewish believers as well during this time right um so the angels are just sent out to serve um god and praise god jesus completed his work so this is the seventh time that the art of hebrew shows jesus superiority over the angels so there's a seat for jesus because he has the right to sit at god's hand the angels they had work to do they were busy they do not have no seat at the throne of god because they already had a task for them Okay. They already was commanded to work and to serve God. But Jesus, he was invited by God the Father to sit at his right hand because that is his son whom he loved. I stated already, angels are ministering spirits, not governing spirits. I don't want y'all to confuse this, but Jesus in the scriptures, he's also called a servant and a minister. But this is a part of his voluntary humility. Jesus was humble and he had a lot of humility and he chose out of his free will. He chose to serve, not to be served. So, you know, he served us um, when he gave up his life for, so we can have life. Right. So that was something he voluntarily did. But the angels are actually commanded to serve. God shares his servants with redeemed men and women. This shows God's great love for us, and he wants to share that along with us. This is the founding and perfecter of our faith, which means where people first encounter God, they keep encountering God through Jesus Christ, because ultimately Jesus is greater. And you'll be doing yourself a disservice to worship anything other than the most high, which is Jesus Christ. That Jesus is greater than every person, practice, policy, procedure in the Old Testament. Jesus is the Son of God. He represents the Father perfectly. Jesus is greater than the angels, Moses. He's the ultimate apostle and leader of God's people. He's the ultimate high priest. Um, he's the only person that can serve and as an anchor of the soul. No one in the Old Testament comes close to Jesus in terms of importance. He is greater than all of them. The ultimate sacrifice. Jesus made a new covenant between people and God. Jesus is the founder and perfecter of our faith, right? And to encounter God, people simply need to go to Jesus and trust in his sacrificial work to cover their sins. This was all about the supremacy of God's son. It's a quite simple chapter, but it does have a lot of depth about Jesus and um, about like his authority. And I just, I guess I'll just leave y'all with that when it comes to your faith, when it comes to being bold, when it comes to any persecution that may come or that's already come. Um, I know some people, Christianity is not, is illegal in some countries. I'm in the United States, so it's legal here. But I believe that um, the more we keep talking about Jesus, there is always going to be some form of persecution. And as Hebrew 1 is stating, 
as it was trying to encourage the Jewish Christians during that time to remain steadfast in their faith. Christianity is not for the faint hearted. It's not for the weak. It's not an aesthetic. It's not an aesthetic. It's literally uh, deny yourself, pick up your cross, commitment to Jesus Christ for your eternal life, for your salvation. It takes courage to be a follower of Christ. It takes courage to pick up your cross without wavering in your faith, without compromising to the cultural standards. It takes courage. It takes faith. It is not easy. This is not easy. It comes with a cost. And so this is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to get the, um, the Jewish Christians to understand throughout the book of Hebrews. And we'll see that as I keep going through this book with y'all. That we entered a narrow gate for broad is the way to destruction. So who is God in this passage? So God is a father, but God is also a son because Jesus is his son, but Jesus is also God. God is superior. God is a creator. God is a voice. God is glorious. God has authority, right? God is above everything. He's sovereign. This is the greatest series of spoke persons God sent. He's the greatest series of spoke persons that God sent and the great high priest. Isn't it amazing that we get to share in salvation and eternal life and faith and all these amazing things because of what Jesus did on the cross? Isn't this amazing? It's amazing. It is. And Hebrews 1 is, it's encouragement. It's encouragement. Because no matter what you're going through, no matter what is going on in your life or whatever, if you just remember that Jesus is above it all, it puts things in a different perspective. It puts things in an eternal perspective. And I think a lot of times we look at things very short term and temporary. But if we put it in an eternal perspective, we will have more peace because we would know that Jesus, he's going to make all of this right one day. Like he's going to come back and we're going to be with him forever one day. And he is the founder and perfecter of our faith that like nothing can separate us from his love. But what was done on the cross was done is done and it's completed and it's finished. The devil can't take that away from us. People, jobs, money, none of that can take that away from us. It cannot separate us from him and what he's already done because he holds the keys to eternal life. And he doesn't mind giving you that key <laughs> as long as you go to him. In other words, accept him. So to keep your relationship with God in perfect standing, you must go through Jesus. You must acknowledge and believe that he exists. You must do that. So yeah, that is <laughs> that is Hebrews chapter one, you guys. So like I said, I will be doing this as a pattern. So like next week, it will be back to a topical message. And then it'll be back like it'll be like a pattern. So y'all see y'all see what I'm talking about as I post. So Right now we're in the book of Hebrews and that's just kind of what I'm going to be breaking down. I am not going to be jumping around the Bible. I'm going to stay in Hebrews until I finish Hebrews. And then when God tell me to go to another book for the podcast, I will. So, so that way y'all can get a full understanding of Hebrews and the context in the scripture. And the link in the description, I will leave my notes. I will leave the commentary uh, sites that I use. And honestly, um... I just pray that this blesses you. I really do pray that this blesses you. Um, I don't know if I said it already, but I just thank you guys for subscribing. Um, welcome to my channel, uh, if those of you who are new here. And yeah, um, again, my name is Maya Deja. Um, and yeah, I'll see y'all next time. God bless. No longer blood that I can see. I'm on my way to meet you We gotta talk